Today we're going to talk about everything RV solar. There are many different RV solar packages out there and today we're going to break all of it down so you understand what you are actually buying. So grab a coffee, grab a beer, grab whatever you're doing and let's sit down and talk RV solar. So we're going to get all personal today about RV solar because I know it is very confusing out there. Some RVs say RV prep, some say solar ready, some say solar on the side, some say solar equipment. Some some say off grid, who knows? I'm gonna jump into it and tell you all about it and what to expect. Now, if you know anything about me, about two years ago, I built the camper from being a regular camper to off grid ready. So I had to learn everything there is to know about solar panels and RVs. So that's where all my knowledge came about. First hand experience in doing all the research and then actually building out a camper to make it RV solar ready. Today we're gonna go over the four different ways your RV could come with solar. But before we jump into there, I wanna give a huge thank you to GoPower for sponsoring this video and this whole RV solar panel build out series. So if you have any questions about solar and you wanna learn a bit more about GoPower, leave it in the comments below or check out the links down below. Every different RV solar package is gonna be slightly different and also they have slightly different purposes. Now, my RV that I built out was completely off the grid. So I could run everything like I was plugged into shore power on my RV when I was in the middle of the bushes. But then there's also RV solar that just keeps your batteries topped up so you can have your 12 volt fridge running. Later on in this series, there's gonna be seven to 10 videos on this. I'm gonna be building out my solar panel system for my Winnebago 2801 BHS. This is the 2022 model. But today, let's go over all the different solar power packages. So when you're shopping for an RV, there's many different wording out there to tell you that your RV has solar, but they rarely make it vague. And there's two reasons. Firstly, because the dealer doesn't even know what they're selling. And thirdly, because they're trying to make you believe that is off-grid ready. And I'm gonna tell you right now, there may be three or four or five big box campers that come off grid ready. All the rest do not. So just because they have a solar panel on it, it does not mean off the grid. But let's start with the basic wording and the basic solar ready equipment and go all the way to the off grid campers. All right, let's jump into the cheapest version of solar equipment that comes with an RV. And that's really gonna be the solar on the side. There's many different terms out there used for it, but all it is, there's a little port on the side of your camper where you'll be able to plug solar panels into. Now, when you plug it into there, all it's doing is it's going straight to the battery and trickle charging your current battery. Now, that being said, you still need to buy solar panels. You have to buy portable solar panels that come equipped with a solar control charger. What that solar control charger does is it turns those sun rays into energy by converting it into DC power and turning it into 12 volt, so then it can trickle charge your batteries. GoPower sells 100 watt Duralite portable kits, they're all in one, and then also there's an expansion kit for another 100 watts, so you can have 200 watts of solar that you can carry along with you in your storage locker, in your truck, and when you get to your boondocking site, you can plug those panels into the solar on the side, and that will keep your battery trickle charged. Now, I'm gonna tell you, all that is doing is trickle charging your battery. You will not have access to your 120 volt TV, your microwave, or your outlets. All it's doing is making sure your battery does not die. Now let's move on to another way your camper could be solar ready. Now these terms are solar ready and prepped for solar. What this means is there's some extra wires. That's it. It doesn't mean there's a solar panel, doesn't mean there's an inverter, that doesn't mean anything. That means there's an access point on your roof that's ready to plug into solar panels and the wires already run down to an area to accept a solar control charger. Now, the panels and the solar control charger normally have to be purchased separately in order to do anything, but all this is is a glorified solar on the side package. This is made for if you want to mount physical solar panels on your roof, they already have run the wire from the roof 
down to a, a storage locker where there's all the wires coming out there ready to be plugged into a solar control charger. Now, let's say you buy a solar panel and you buy a solar control charger and you install those. Again, all this is doing is going to trickle charge your current battery. This isn't giving you access to the 120 volt system. This isn't giving you access to your TV, your microwave and so on. This is purely just trickle charging your battery think about it as you can either put the solar panels in your truck and use solar on the side or you can install a solar panel on your roof and then have a solar control charger inside and then it will trickle charge your battery so one's a portable solution and one is a, a mountable solution that stays permanently mounted neither of them give you that 120 volt power they are really there to trickle charge your battery now the third way that solar can come equipped on your camper is by already having the second way done where they have a solar panel mounted on the roof they have those wires come down to a solar charge controller and that's trickle charging your battery now with the decline in the propane powered refrigerators and everyone going over to the the more efficient 12 volt refrigerators all the rv manufacturers are having to add a 200 watt solar panel on the roof they're putting in a solar control charger to trickle charge that battery because before you were able to run your fridge off propane and that could run basically a week or so depending on your conditions just off the propane. Now these 12 volt fridges, although they are more efficient, you cannot run a day or two with just the battery and it not dying. So they had to because they worked their way into this with the COVID shortage or the moving away from propane fridges and so on. And now you have to have a solar panel on the roof in order to make the fridge even feasible. Now, I don't necessarily recommend having a 12 volt fridge instead of a propane fridge when you are off grid camping all the time because I off-grid camp in the winter, the sun's not always there, and you would rather save that energy for other things like lights and the TV, and the propane could run the fridge. But unfortunately, all these propane fridges are disappearing, so this current camper has a 12-volt fridge. The good thing is it's much bigger, but now I have to increase my battery storage in order to keep the fridge running longer. So let's just summarize the first three. We've got solar on the side, and that's strictly to trickle charge the battery. We got solar ready or prepped for solar, and that really is just the wiring hard mounted on the roof so you can still install solar panels. You still have to buy those separately and the solar control charger. Then you have the solar already installed on the camper but no inverter. It's really the two options but it is installed from factory mounted on the roof with the solar control charger and that is trickle charging your battery. Now the final option is done two ways which I don't like, but it's how the industry does it. When a camper now advertise off-grid ready, you have the Ember campers, you have the Micro Mini FLX, you have the Black Series, and then you have really off-grid campers. But those are the ones off the top of my mind that have an off-grid ready package. Now, what that means is it comes with more solar on the roof, it comes with a solar control charger, then it comes with an inverter that takes that 12 volt uh, power, turns it into 120 volt power so your outlets work, and then that is true off grid. Now there's two ways people do this. They either have the inverter hooked up to certain outlets, which only means one outlet in your bedroom. Let's say you got 10 outlets. They'll say one in the bedroom, one in the bathroom, and one in the living room are only hooked up to the inverter. All the other ones have to be plugged into shore power. The better way to do it is just have everything run off the inverter. Now, obviously, if you want all the outlets live with the inverter, you're going to have to have a bigger inverter. So this is how manufacturers are also saving some money by just not wiring the whole camper to off grid. So let's summarize again. Solar on the side. Option one. 
Option two, is solar ready or prepped for solar? Option three, it already has one solar panel and a solar charge controller, and that's just to trickle charge your actual battery. And then option four is really the off-grid package, which does include an inverter, so some outlets will work, but hopefully the brand you choose, all the outlets work. Now, I'm gonna tell you my journey on what I did with my RV to make it 100% off-grid. So when I had to learn all of this, I wanted to find one company that supplied the solar panel, the solar charge controller, the battery, the inverter, because I know in the tech world, if you use product A, product B, and product C, and there's an issue and you're trying to diagnose the issue, and you call company A, they're going to say, well, you know, you use company B and we're not compatible. Or company A is going to blame company C that something's not working. And I just wanted to avoid all of that. And also, they couldn't give you the direct support. Well, I've got, you know, solar panel this, I got solar control charger that, and I got inverter this. They're like, well, we don't specialize in those products, so we can't tell you anything about them. So then you back to square one trying to figure it all out. Now, when I did my solar maybe three, four years ago now, oof, I decided to go with GoPower. Firstly, because they are the one of the few companies that do all of them. They do the solar panels, they do the solar charge controller, they do the inverter, and when I started, they weren't big into batteries. I wanted lithium batteries, so I went with Battleborn batteries. But this time around, I'm going 100% go power because now they just released some lithium batteries. So when I built out my panel, my goal was to use the same brand for everything in case I ran into issues because I was new to all of this. Now I must tell you, GoPower has some fantastic customer service and tech support. When you call their tech person, they actually know the products and they can help diagnose an issue with you. And I had to do that a couple times on the road because I learned it, but I tell you, they are fantastic. And that's why when I'm doing this build, I chose to go with GoPower and they saw all the work that I did before and they decided to help me out on this build. Another reason I decided to go with GoPower is if you look at all these companies that already have the solar panel on the roof, nine times out of 10, they're using GoPower solar panels. Nine times out of 10, all the RV brands are using or at least advertising GoPower solar panels and solar control chargers. Now, when things started uh, heating up with off-grid, all of these companies were trying to get the best price. GoPower by no means is the cheapest, and I don't recommend you go with the cheapest. They are a premium type product with premium prices, and I believe they can command that because of their customer service and their support and everything else. But anyways, Micro Mini FLX decided they would launch. They used GoPower solar panels. They use a GoPower solar charge controller. Then they switched to a different inverter and they used different batteries. Now, if you follow anything about the Micro Mini FLX, firstly, uh, I recommend that camper. It's fantastic if you don't have time to build out your own solar panel system. But I'll tell you, the biggest problem is having three different apps, three different companies, three different systems trying to run your solar power. That is an issue. That is the biggest mistake that Winnebago has done. And now they have just purchased Zantrax batteries, or however you say it. And I've actually had some uh, words with Winnebago so much so they don't like me anymore because I think what they did is not user friendly and the demographic that's buying it is not getting the support they need. So another reason to do your own solar is firstly so you can learn it, but then you can choose to go with one company, be it GoPower, be it someone else. I recommend GoPower. You want to stick with everything under one brand. Now again, Ember Campers, new up to the market, but they come from Jayco, family member of Jayco, started up Ember Campers. 
They did the same thing. They went with Go Power, so Go Power Solar. They went with Go Power Solar Charge Controller. Then they went with Battleborn Batteries. And they've also mixed brands because they all cost cutting. It does not make sense. If you're trying to make a one user experience, stick with one brand. I don't care what brand that anyone does, but stop changing brands for batteries, chargers, inverters. It creates a mess for the end consumer. But anyways, guys, that is the four, five different options you get when you're searching for solar for your camper. Now, I'm going to tell you the solar on the side, it doesn't add any value to your camper. The solar ready or prepped for solar doesn't add any value to your camper. The one solar panel on your roof going to a solar charge controller, nine times out of ten, that is done purely because they switched to a 12 volt fridge and not a propane fridge. So they had to do it so they would have a better user experience. But that rarely doesn't add any value to your camper. Now, the off grid, that's gonna add a lot of cost and value to your camper. And one thing I'm gonna finalize this whole end off with is when you add solar off the market to your camper, that value, because solar is not cheap, that ten, twelve, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars does not get added to the value of your camper. Now, the smart thing with uh, Ember and Micro Mini is that off-grid package that is added to the sticker price now holds value in the actual camper. So when you go to trade in your camper. It holds that solar power value because that's in the KBB or the RV evaluation because it was factory installed. So that is something to keep in mind. If you add solar to your camper, you will not get that value when you go trade in the camper. Or if you buy a camper with all the solar, off-grid solar, you will get the value on trade-in on that camper. So guys, this is one out of 10 or so videos I'm going to be doing. Next video, I'm going to explain to you why you would want to upgrade your solar, all the difference about 300 watts of solar versus the 1300 watts, what you can actually power with it, uh, what 200 watts of solar can do for trickle charging. I'm going to jump into the nitty gritty of all the different things. But if you want to learn more about solar panels and go power and everything, check out the link down below or simply just leave a comment and I will interact with you guys. So thanks a lot for tuning in and until next time, I'll see you then.